University of Irvine, California, Irvine, was opened in 1965 with the vision for higher education and a dream for a future city. UCI has served the community with academic excellence ever since. Today, all forms of innovation, of talent, of internet, intellectual thought rise together. Students prosper and build careers here. UCI is one of the leading public universities in the country. According to the US News and World Report annual college survey, UCI is ranked among the top 50 universities nation, nationwide and ranks 11th among all public universities. Achievements in, in the sciences, arts, humanities, medicine, and management are second to none. The progress at UCI mirrors the progress of the city. UCI truly reflects the vision that the community dreamed of. Unfortunately, Chancellor Michael Drake wasn't able to attend this evening. But here on behalf of UCI is Liz Toomey, Assistant Vice Chancellor. Would you please? As a business entity, much can be said about Allegan, a key company in Irvine's history. Allegan celebrated its 60th anniversary last year. What an idea the company's first leaders had to set up its headquarters in a place where there was little commerce and, of course, no city at the time. That truly was the pioneering spirit. Allegan's reputation as a leading global multi-specialty healthcare company is well-deserved. Today, Allegan is a $3 billion company with leading portfolios in eye care, neurosciences, medical dermatology, medical aesthetics, and obesity intervention. Much as the city is committed to a high quality of life for everyone, Allegan's mission has remained constant to deliver products to satisfy unmet medical needs and to improve patients' lives. We salute Allegan for its vision and commitment to mankind. It is my honor to introduce Chairman and CEO David Payat. Let me now turn to additional city plans and accomplishments. On the night President Obama was focusing his State of the Union address on economic development, our city council was vigorously exploring the very same topic at our city council meeting. Irvine City Council directed staff to develop an additional list of business-friendly initiatives that will enhance the quality of development and business community in Irvine. Also, our development partner at the former El Toro Marine Base, Five Point Communities, recently filed some 10,000 pages of plans for its Great Park Neighborhood Project. The filing is the first step toward construction of the Great Park neighborhoods adjacent to our Orange County Great Park. The submittal begins the process for construction of nearly 5,000 homes and 1.2 million square feet of commercial space. We work together while planning separately to create a new community that will further define Irvine while creating a great park for centuries to come. Five Point Community President and CEO Emil Haddad clearly <laughs> We have a little more. Clearly shares the same vision, and we thank you for your leadership, despite all the challenges that you had to face. Now, Emil, would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> thank you. Those of you who have paid off your mortgage will really appreciate the, this next milestone. Last November, 
we retire the debt of our 22-year-old Civic Center, which will provide a general fund savings of $6 million a year going forward. It truly, <laughs> it truly is your Civic Center now. Last July, the City Council unanimously approved the Irvine Business Complex Vision Plan. This plan provides for the continued evolution of the 2,600-acre IBC, Orange County's largest employment center. Already, there are 45 vibrant businesses and more than 89,000 jobs in the IBC. To help expedite new development in the IBC, the City Council at our last City Council meeting approved a more than 72% reduction in transportation mitigation fees for developers. This is yet another great piece of news for the development community in the Irvine Business Complex. This mixed-use live-and-work concept will be an enormous undertaking and true to our goal of putting jobs within walking or biking distance. This is the biggest workforce housing plan in the city's history. And I'm proud to say that we have accomplished much by working hand in hand with the business community and the neighboring cities. We are awaiting word of the latest violent crime statistics compiled by the FBI to determine if we are America's safest city with a population over 100,000 for a seventh straight year. Most notably, we enter our 40th anniversary with an unprecedented achievement. 2010 was the lowest year in violent and part one crime per capita in Irvine's history. You know, it takes teamwork with our community. We work with residents, businesses, Irvine Public Schools, and many dedicated nonprofit organizations to keep Irvine safe. The truth is that a safe community helps business decide to move here, families to settle here, schools to thrive here, and people to be proud to live here. Last September, our police department received the 2010 Freedom Award from the U.S. Secretary of Defense. The Freedom Award is given to a select few employers nationwide that provide exceptional support to employees who serve as reservists and National Guard. We were one of 15 honorees selected from more than 2,500 applicants throughout the nation. This was another example of the city's excellence. <laughs> On a related subject, I'm very happy to share great news that our own Chief of Police, Dave Maggard, has been selected as President of the California Police Chiefs Association. Congratulations, Chief Maggard. On the transportation front, in November, the Irvine City Council completed an exchange program of Proposition 116 funds with the Orange County Transportation Authority. We succeeded in preserving $121.3 million to realize the city's long-term public transportation plan. This agreement implements the payment of operations and maintenance of the city's ice shuttle program for the next 30 years. The service carries commuters to and through the Irvine Business Complex and to and from the Tustin Metrolink Station. The first full year of funding for the ice shuttle will begin in July in our new fiscal year and will allow for the expansion of the service into the Irvine Spectrum 
business area as early as this summer. This is indeed setting a long-range transit vision for our future. We recently completed the new travel lanes for the Jeffrey Road Undercrossing Project. This was the largest road construction project in the city's 40-year history. It allows traffic to flow smoothly along one of our major thoroughfares, uninterrupted below the railroad line. The city's public works department and the Orange County Transportation Authority are preparing for our next major road project, the $54 million Sand Canyon Undercrossing Project. On the automotive front, the city is home to numerous companies working in design concepts, corporate activity, and sale. With such marquee names as Ford, Hyundai, Kia, and Mazda, we understand the value of this combination of business strength and innovation. To further strengthen our profile, the Irvine Auto Center recently welcomed a new Chevrolet dealership. Last year, we promoted our new family of businesses with the addition of such important members as Western Digital and Hogue Hospital Irvine. Combined, they brought more than 2,400 jobs. Western Digital, is a world-renowned manufacturer of hard drives, continuing to develop innovative products in this market. Hoke Hospital Irvine, as one of the leading medical institutions, continually addresses the critical need, critical healthcare needs in this area. A few months ago, I received an email from Irvine Unified School District and saw retirement announcement next to the name of one of my favorite professionals. Honestly, my heart sank. Superintendent Gwen Gross announced that she is retiring this June. Under Gwen's leadership, IUSD has kept its test scores, its among the highest in the state, despite an economy that has severely impacted schools. She introduced intervention programs designed to support the needs of each student. Gwen has been a remarkable leader of a school district that makes the city so proud. At this time, I would like to acknowledge Dr. Gwen Gross, <laughs> Superintendent. You truly are a visionary in excellence in education. And thank you, Gwen, for your dedicated service to IUSD.